In this video, we're going to explore some overlooked DC first appearances from the Bronze Age. We're going to have 10 plus a bonus book coming up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hey there, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. And before we get started, like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Uh, follow us on the other social medias, Instagram, Bronzeville underscore comics, whatnot. I do sales every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Also, Bronzeville underscore comics. And if you're not yet on what, uh, whatnot, you can get a um, you can sign up through the link in the description of this video and get five dollars. Five dollars. So if you first purchase, that'd be ten. I think it's five. Um, also, in the link of the also in the description is a link to my eBay store as well as my email if you want to reach out to me. So um, I decided to take a look at some DC books from the Bronze Age that contain first appearances that aren't really on anybody's radar. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and buy these. Do your own research. But what I am saying is these might be books that you kind of keep in your mental Rolodex. Um, as possibilities if you see them in bargain bins because a lot of these books are really overlooked and you'll see them in in the one three and five dollar bins um, at comic stores and shows you know there's maybe only one or two books that generally go for any value we'll talk about the values as we go through the book so let's start and i'm going to go in Reverse chronological order of the book's release. I'm going to start with the 1983 book, Fury of Firestorm, number 17, the first appearance of Firehawk. Now, Firehawk was a superpowered kind of companion to Firestorm. It was his romantic interest. Uh, the um, alter ego was Lorraine Riley, who did premiere in issue one of the series, but it was in issue 17 that Firehawk got um, her superpowers and became a superhero that fought alongside Firestorm for quite a bit and had a fairly prominent role in crisis on infinite earths um this is a book that you could find for under ten dollars even if you look for it on ebay um the last uh, sale of a cgc 9.8 was 70 dollars back in 2020 so this is a really cheap book but this is a character that dc has kept using they've given other individuals the firehawk name but lorraine riley as recently as i think it was earlier this year was one of the characters in the one star squadron series um if they ever really go with firestorm uh i think firehawk might make sense to be included because she hasn't been a character that was explored at all in the arrowverse up next uh from 1982 is it's one of those books where there was a preview in the middle of the regular book of one of DC's better selling titles. This is Legion of Superheroes 298, which is has a preview that is the first appearance of Amethyst, Princess of Gem World. It launched her into her own 12 issue self titled series at the time. A couple of years later, came back with another 16 issue series. And in 2020, there was a six issue miniseries branching out of her uh, appearances as a member of Young Justice. Now, again, this is a book that's about $10. Uh, there are a couple of recent uh, CGC 9.8 sales, but their best offer accepted probably went for about $100, not much more than that. Um, Amethyst is kind of her own in a separate uh, dimension that sometimes crosses over with the current, the, the regular DC universe. So it is something interesting that could be explored. Uh, she did have a series of animated shorts on the Cartoon Network. So um, that was kind of, I believe, geared towards younger kids. And she did appear um, not as a featured member, but she has been uh, seen in DC Superhero Girls, the animated series. There were actually two separate ones. So it's somebody that DC does kind of have on the radar. And you never know. And again, that first appearance is, is is cheap enough. Although Legion of Superheroes was one of DC's more popular titles at the time. And um, there there are a good number of them out there. But those Legion books are in the dollar bins. So, um, you know, you can you can dig and probably find some 298s. Uh, up next on the list, I'm going to go back to 1981. And this is one of the favorite books uh, to kind of spec on of James of Mint Hunter comics and it's Tales of the Green Lantern Corps number two, the first appearance of Necron. Now, Necron was the main antagonist in the 
um, kind of epic, uh, multi-part uh, annual crossover event that DC did in 2010, Blackest Night. Um, and that could possibly one be one of the storylines that is done at some point going down uh, the road. Um, and you'd have to have Necron as the villain. Uh, it's certainly a possible character that could make a fairly important, a fairly imposing big bad for an overarching storyline that seems to be the way that G James Gun Gunn is trying to construct the DC universe in films and television. Again, film and television spec is quite difficult right now uh, because of the writers and actors strikes. But um, this book is about a $15 book raw. A 9.8 is about $180. And um, again, it's a book that you could probably often find in back issue bins and dollar bins. Let's stay with Green Lantern uh, and let's stay in 1981. We're going to go to the main title, Green Lantern, which is Green Lantern Volume 2. Number 149, the first appearance of Salak, who is a member of the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, the character did have a cameo in the Ryan Reynolds movie. And it's OK if you've forgotten about that, if you wipe that from your memory. This is a book that's less than $10 raw. Uh, it did have a sale in a CGC 9.8 of $120 in February. And uh, it's not one of the bigger keys in that run. A lot of times those flash books, because the keys are fairly minor, uh, probably the biggest one in that kind of like, let's say whenever they, well, like let's say 125 to 200 uh, is the probably the first Omega Men still. There's a lot of keys related to Guy Gardner and Jon Stewart. We know we're getting a Lanterns TV series and imagine eventually we're going to have a Green Lantern core. And look at the value of 201, which is the first appearance of Kilowog. Um, that's a book that is well over $200. I still believe in a 9.8. And um, if we get Salak featured as one of the... Um, the more uh, prominent members of the Green Lantern Corps, it could help this book. Let's go to the next one on our list. Brave and the Bold, number 166 from 1980, the first appearance of Nemesis. Um, now, Nemesis uh, is a character who had a backup series in Brave and the Bold around that time in 1980. This was after DC had kind of recovered from the implosion. They increased the page... Um, of their, the page count of their books from 32 to 44. And so they always had backup stories like Huntress and Wonder Woman or um, the Firestorm was in Flash. And I believe Dr. Fate was also in Flash. And one of the backups and the back of the Brave and the Bold for a number of issues was Nemesis. Now, Nemesis is also interesting because there were kind of a burgeoning romantic relationship with him and Wonder Woman in the comics but um it was it, it didn't uh, it didn't work out let's say because actually um the way that they wrote the story Wonder Woman was more looking for someone to help her um have a child essentially more than anything romantic but it is a fairly interesting character and kind of can go into that espionage kind of amanda waller suicide squad kind of part of the dc universe and again it's a 10 to 20 dollar book raw for the most part and a cgc 9.8 sold in august of 2022 during pretty much the height of the comic boom for 109 dollars. so it's fairly easy to find um let's go on to another book super friends number 25 the first appearance of green fury who later becomes fire Beatrice da Costa, who uh, at points is a member of the Global Guardians. She was one of the more prominent characters um, in the Keith Giffen, Kevin Maguire, Bwahaha, Martian Manhunter eating Oreos era of Justice League, which I really enjoyed at the time. It was it was uh, it was quite a different uh, type of storytelling that you had seen. But Booster Gold is coming. He was one of the, the main members. You, the Basically, the core of that team was Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, Fire and Ice, um, and John Jones, and Guy Gardner. We're getting Guy Gardner, we're getting Booster Gold. 
And that's a team that, that many people of a certain age remember fondly, and they kind of have more of a, a comedic aspect to it. So Fire and Ice, um, it's a Brazilian character, which kind of uh, adds to more of an international appeal. Now, Fire, who is um, kind of like their, their best buddies, uh, did make her first appearance in Justice League uh, number 12 from that run. And there has been a new Fire and Ice Welcome to Smallville series that was just soli- solicited in this past week's uh, FOC. So it is a character that is essentially getting co-getting her own title coming up. So that is kind of interesting. Another thing about the Ice character is that there was a character called Ice Maiden, uh, who is also a member of the Global Guardians. A Glob- lot of Global Guardians. Any one of those could appear. Um she appears in Super Friends number nine. Now, the Super Friends comic book, also where the Wonder Twins made their first appearance, was not part of DC continuity. It was based on the animated series from the 1970s. And so it's not canonical, but it does include some first appearances. Um, and she first premiered as Green Fury uh, and later as became known as Fire. Let's take a step back to 1979. Adventure Comics 467 and the, I think it's the third iteration of Starman uh, after Wesley Dodds in the Golden Age and the um, first issue special one shot with the blue alien. This is another alien, Prince Gavin, who is uh, the prince of his own uh, planet. This is a book that's under $10 raw. And at this point, Adventure Comics for about a year, Starman and Plastic Man where split the book. They were the, the two stars. And the Starman series was created, written and drawn by Steve Ditko. Um, now, this character has been used somewhat infrequently. He was killed off in Crisis on Infinite Earth, I think largely because they had enough Starmen. They've brought up a few more since then. Um, so we don't need any more Starmen. They're, they're, this particular character, the Prince Gavin character, hasn't been seen since the New 52, since before New 52 started, so before Flashpoint. Um, so it might be time for them to, to dust off the mothballs, and he is a galactic character if they go in that direction. It's someone they could include. Again, it's less than $10 for a raw book. In July, a CGC 9.8 sold for $264. A lot of that is because now we're talking about books from the 1970s, 9.8s are more difficult to obtain. Up next, and I haven't featured a lot of books uh, in this list that I featured uh, other times, but this is a book that I've been uh, I've been grabbing when I can find it, uh, and I've talked about since I started this channel, and it's Teen Titans number forty-eight, the first appearance of Bumblebee. Now that character had first appeared in issue forty-five, and her civilian identify as identity is Karen Beecher, but she becomes a superhero uh, super. But she becomes the superhero Bumblebee in issue number 48. It's from 1977. This is a book you could probably get for under $20. A little bit more difficult in raw grade because you're talking about 1977. Um, a 9.4 recently sold for $120. The last sale of a 9.8 was back in November of 2022 for $6.50. Um, I've had a devil of a time getting this book in good condition. Most of the ones I've come across, even at shows, are beat up. Um, I do have a copy of my personal collection, and I know how well it uh, held up. Now, two interesting aspects about Bumblebee, which I've talked about in the past. Number one, she's the first female African-American superhero in DC Comics history. That's because Vixen was supposed to premiere, but the DC implosion um, canceled her. I think she was supposed to get her own title, and then uh, Bumblebee appeared. The other interesting thing about Bumblebee, she's been featured prominently on animated shows, the shows that are aimed for kids, DC Superhero Girls. In the second iteration of that, uh, she's one of the featured characters. And she also, for a very brief period of time, was a member of Teen Titans Go. I I think it was, what, three or four years ago they were advertising her as a new member. It didn't last, uh, I don't think. I don't watch Teen Titans Go religiously. But this is a character that DC has been kind of putting into different properties, in at least in their animated universe. Uh, would it make sense to see her in live action? Sure. Although, potentially, you know, the uh, power set is a little too close to Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, and that's one of the problems 
when you have Marvel and DC going back and forth and so many of the characters, almost every character is similar to character in the other um, line of books and it varies as to who came first. For instance, Thanos, the big bad uh, for the Avengers Infinity War saga. Darkseid, Thanos was based on Darkseid, so you don't get a lot of um, crossover. So let's uh, stay in 1977. We're going to go to Richard Dragon, Kung Fu Fighter number 18. The last issue of the series is the first appearance of the Bronze Tiger. This is another character who made an earlier appearance in his uh, secret identity, I guess as you call it, or we did call it in 1977, the secret identity of Ben Turner. Uh, and then he takes on the mantle of the Bronze Tiger. This is a character that has been in the comics um, quite a bit uh, by... The, um, the book Raw is about a $10 to $20 book. Uh, in December, a 9.8 sold for $3.75. Again, you're talking about any so sort of key, and we're talking about, you know, we're going back to the Carter administration at this point. Um, so it is an old book. The character did appear in the Arrowverse, I believe on the Arrow series for, for a brief period of time. Um, he has been a member of the Suicide Squad quite a bit over the last, what, 37 years history of the Suicide Squad. He's also a member of the League of Assassins. We got Waller. We know we're going to get this, probably going to get the Suicide Squad. We have Damian Wayne, which means there has to be the existence of his mother and grandfather in Talia and Ra's al Ghul. So there's probably a League of Assassins. He, Damian Wayne was trained by the League of Assassins. So, um, and I think the other thing that makes this character interesting is he is African-American. Um, so it, is, uh, you know, he was kind of a groundbreaking character in the 70s. We'll look at the the last one on our, our list, then plus the bonus. This is, uh, and this one is a little bit of a pricier book uh, because now we're going back to 1975 also. It's first issue special number eight, the first appearance of Warlord. Um, this is a book that you probably have to spend at least $40 on to get it in high grade. And a 9.6 was the most recent graded sale that sold for uh, $300. So uh, Warlord is a was a member uh, is a character that has had four different series over the year. Um, created an entire, I believe, almost every one of his appearances, uh, written and drawn by Mike Grell, who a lot of people may remember from his run uh, right before this on the Legion. A run around this time, a little bit later, on Green Lantern. Uh, did some Shaman's Tears and John Sable Freelance in the independent market. But anyway, Warlord premiered in first issue special number eight. Um, then he had a backup in OMAC for a while. And then he got his own title, which lasted 133 issues. So it lasted for 11 years. Uh, there have been three subsequent series, short continuing series, I believe, and two miniseries. Um, so it's Travis Morgan is an Air Force pilot who uh, crashes in this um, f lost world of Skataris. And there are dinosaurs there. There's a lot of sword and sorcery. In the mid-70s, DC was really exploring the sword and sorcery route with some of their books. Uh, this is a character that's stuck. Like I said, he lasted until the mid-80s in his own book. 133 issues in an impressive run on a title. Um now, in the last series that Grell did of the character in 2010, uh, at the end of the, the thing, spoiler warning, he killed him off. His son did take up the mantle. There are a lot of similarities between the Warlord character and Skataris and the Savage Land uh, that uh, Kazar in Marvel Comics is from, but it's certainly something that could be explored at some point in time. So... Um, I think that uh, it, it's an interesting book. I picked up this book a couple of times um, and I, I haven't really wanted to pick up the run because adding another 133 issue run to what I already have is probably unnecessary. But the first appearance um, is a good one to have. These are all good first appearances to have. They, again, all 10 of these first appearances, all minor first appearances. And with the exception of Necron, they're all hero first appearances. Although Bronze Tiger is a little bit more of an anti-hero. Um, then I'm going to give you one bonus book and it is a DC comic from 1970, but it's not a, something we're going to see in the DCU. I can pretty much guarantee you that this is Hot Wheels. Number one, there was a six issue series of Hot Wheels that ran now Hot Wheels, um, the, the little toy cars only came out in 1968. So two years later, they had their own comic book, um, 
The Royal books are probably in excess of $100 in decent shape. Uh, the most recent sale of a graded book was a 9.0 for $295 in June. I bring this up because it's priced higher than the other books. But it's something that a lot of people are going to overlook. Right? Yeah, it's a number one book from 1970, but it's Hot Wheels. Not a lot of comic collectors really kind of, you know, focus on Hot Wheels or really notice that as a notable uh, book. But it's worth $100 in, in like probably very fine or better. And um, we know it's a Mattel property. And with the success of the Barbie movie, Mattel is looking to and expand their cinema universe, for lack of a better term. Uh, one of the properties that I've heard a few times is Hot Wheels. It was a DC comic during the very beginning of the Bronze Age. So I kind of threw it in here. I didn't want it part of the list because it's... Is it a first appearance? I mean, it's the first appearance of Hot Wheels, their cars, but the, I don't know. I didn't, I've never read this book. Um, and for all I know, I could have it sitting in a collection somewhere, um, you know, but it's, it's, you know, if you're finding books from that era, maybe, maybe it's there, you know, maybe it's between, you know, Binky's Buddies and the Adventures of Jerry Lewis or something. So anyway, that's this list. Let me know what you think about the list. Let me know what books that you are or might be interested in or this video says oh yeah that's a really cool character maybe i'll try to find that first appearance so uh let me know in the comments below in the meantime you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here and this is jim saying until next time enjoy your comics